Let me start this video by being perfectly honest with you. I screwed up. If you watched my last video on changing the oil in this Jeep, you know I was planning to take a sample of the oil and send it to a lab for analysis. Well, I technically did, but with one minor change. You see, I had to take the oil sample from my catch pan because I got distracted while draining the oil because the stupid magnetic drain bolt got stuck to the oil pan while I was trying to do a trick I saw on YouTube Shorts, but it didn't work right because of the magnet and oil was going everywhere so I had to resolve that minor issue before I started cleaning up all the spilled oil that went everywhere which is why I forgot to take the oil sample while the oil was draining. So basically, it wasn't my fault. On the one hand, I've had this catch pan for at least 10 years, and I can't open it up to look inside, but you'd think there would be all kinds of contaminants in there that would ruin the sample. On the other hand, I did empty the catch pan the last time I used it, so now its contents should be at least 99% the oil I just drained from the Jeep, and the lab says contaminants in the oil tend to stay in suspension, which makes me think that contaminants in the catch pan would be less likely to have mixed with the freshly drained oil, but I could be completely wrong about that. And I figure, good results are still good, and if the results are bad, I can just try again. To get the cleanest sample, I started pouring oil out of the catch pan while it was still warm, and had my girlfriend collect a sample midstream. If the sample was contaminated by the dirty catch pan, we should see some clear signs of that in the analysis. With that said, welcome to Endless Money Pits. This is my 1998 Jeep Grand Cherokee, and today we'll go over the lab analysis from its very first oil sample. The type of oil tested was Castrol Edge 5W30 Full Synthetic, and the filter was a Bosch Distance Plus, part number D3402. At the time that I changed the oil, the engine had over 208,000 miles on it, and the oil had been run for about 5,600 miles over 38 months. The oil filter had been run for about 8,600 miles over 51 months, because I didn't replace it at the last oil change. I drove the Jeep for about 45 minutes before taking the sample to burn off any excess moisture and thoroughly mix the oil. In my notes to the lab, I let them know that the Jeep had been running rough lately and smelled like the mixture was rich. I also let them know that I've added about 3 quarts of oil since the last oil change, and I also mentioned that my videos had probably sent some people their way, but I didn't tell them anything about possibly contaminating the sample with my dirty catch pan. By the way, if you haven't seen my first oil analysis video yet, you should check it out. It's on track to be my first video to hit 1 million views. Anyway, let's get to the results, starting with the comments from the lab technician. David, thanks for the notes and for steering people our way. The oil filter was in use for a while, but it still did a good job, see low insolubles, and the rich mixture didn't result in excess fuel dilution. The approximately 3 quarts of makeup oil helped to keep metals low by diluting the levels, but even with that in mind, these are good wear results. The 2.8 TBN shows active additive in reserve. Just note sodium. It might show a trace of coolant contamination, but it's not high enough to be sure. If you note coolant loss, or if the poor performance continues, inspect closely. This sounds like a pretty good start, and I agree that the added 3 quarts of oil likely contributed to the positive results, but we'll have to take a look at the numbers to see what they're really talking about. To simplify things, I've organized the data from the lab into my own spreadsheet. I had purchased the oil filter I used for this test specifically because it was capable of extended oil change intervals, so I wasn't surprised to hear that the filter was still doing its job, but it's always good to get confirmation since it's something you can't really check at home. I also expected to see a higher percentage of insolubles here if any of the heavier contaminants from my catch pan had actually mixed with the sample. It's also good to know that the oil didn't have any fuel in it from the engine running rich, but the lab says to be mindful of possible coolant contamination because the sodium level was a little on the high side. My catch pan has definitely had coolant in it, so this could be our first sign of contamination, but 53 parts per million really isn't significant, especially considering the average is 37. Leave a comment letting me know where you think the sodium's coming from. Two things the lab didn't mention that really stood out to me were titanium, which was 24 times higher than the average and usually comes from engine wear, or contamination, but contamination from what? and magnesium, which was more than two and a half times higher than the average, but is typically used as a detergent or corrosion inhibitor by oil manufacturers. Iron was also a bit higher than average, but not by much. All the other elements found in the oil appear to be within spec, so now let's move on to the oil properties. Both measurements of viscosity fall within range, and the flash point is 20 degrees above the minimum, which is pretty good. Once again, there is no fuel found in the oil sample, but here's something odd. In the column next to antifreeze, the lab just put a question mark. 
I'm not sure if that was an accident or if their equipment wasn't working right that day, but I've never had one of these oil tests come back with a question mark in one of the categories before. I wish they would have said something about this, especially considering the questionable amount of sodium found in the sample, but at least we can see there is no water found in the sample, which is a core component of antifreeze. However, small amounts of water can get burned off when the engine gets up to operating temperature, so you can't really be sure just based on that. Insolubles fall within range, as the lab tech stated, but I also paid an additional fee for the lab to test the TBN, which is something many viewers have requested in the comments from my previous videos. TBN stands for total base number, and it's a measurement of how much base additive is remaining in the oil to offset the effects of acids entering the oil from combustion and other sources. TBN readings for fresh oil start between 6.0 and 14.0 depending on the engine type. In used oil, we want to see results higher than 1.0 because anything less than that means we're running out of additive. Today's oil sample had a good reading at 2.8, and I suspect that's due to all the fresh oil I've added in between oil changes. But to be honest, our Toyota Yaris also consumed about 3 quarts of oil over a similar number of miles, and came back with a TBN of 4.3. Of course, that's a completely different engine pulling a much smaller car, so we can't draw too many conclusions based on that comparison. As many commenters have requested, this time I used Mobile One 5W30 Full Synthetic along with an oil filter made by Mobile One, so I'll be having an analysis run on this batch of oil in the future, but it won't be fair to compare with these results either. On the last batch of oil, I only used the Jeep to run errands once every couple of weeks and took it on the occasional camping adventure in the woods, but since filming this video, I've moved 2200 miles from Oregon to Arkansas. I drove the Jeep the whole way, loaded down with a bunch of my stuff, and pulling a trailer fully loaded with a bunch more. Now I've been driving it almost every day to deliver food for DoorDash, and the miles are racking up faster than ever before, so I should probably do another oil change soon, or maybe I'll wait until it hits the 5600 mile mark again. Leave a comment letting me know what you think I should do. Before driving this thing cross country, I also changed the Jeep's transfer case fluid for the first time in 10 years, so I'm going to be having a lab analysis done on a sample of that as well. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe for more of the best DIY videos on the internet. And until next time, just keep throwing money at it.